so so nobody in the history of ever seems to take over the internet as much as you do. I don't know what you do. Right? Yeah, so let, let me get my piece off real quick. Yeah, I, I was on the phone with you earlier, right and I called, and I, I wanted to speak about, like, the whole cheese thing, right? Like, I feel like, you know, maybe cheese is a little bit too far. And, I, and I'm having a conversation with Chris, and I understand all the points of view. And even, even especially dating back to me, just making sure that anybody that ever felt some way about me knew that, well, fuck it, I feel the same way about you. Um, so anyways, you got this situation. A lot of people are going crazy on you crazy on you right now about the, you know, why'd you bring up cheese? What does he have to do with anything? And so I was like, fuck, where you at with it? Uh, fuck, yeah, 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 I can't hear you all. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? God damn it. I'm trying to drive and do this shit at the same time. Can you hear me? Uh, uh. There you go. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so what's up, man? Uh, fuck cheese. I don't give a damn about no nigga dead son. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about... Uh, I've never buried a, a close friend nor a family member to gun violence. So my best friend, my best friend would kill her recently. Uh, but nigga, once the nigga dead, he dead. Uh, so dead, the, uh, the dead people don't give a... I don't give a fuck about the dead. So I don't give a fuck about keys so if a nigga say something to me and disrespect me his mama his, his molested daughter all that in play for me yeah, yeah I, I mean like you. I it's like tough you. though right like it, yeah but it's tough right like it's it's a situation that a lot of people were um you know that that, that kind of like it touched a lot of people's hearts because you know the world saw his son die you know it, so i i personally it, it, can't it, say it, fuck it, keys you know uh, it, it 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 touched my heart too remember I, somebody asked me something about his son when he first died, and, and I didn't say nothing. I spurred him. I showed him mercy and gracie uh, from a father's standpoint, right? You know what? I actually believe that you were you were around at that time. You you might have been at the studio. I was. And you just left that night uh, yeah, uh, uh, when it when it happened, and uh, I spoke to you about it, and you and you felt yeah, you I were like, damn, that's terrible. terrible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I felt, but but shit, nigga. Uh, but I don't have no compassion for him now. Uh, when I open up the obituary and I look at who died in the obituary, that don't affect me. When I watch the news and I see somebody die, that don't affect me. Uh, his son's death don't affect me. And I'm just saying, when King Von and Dirk was on the million dollar mouth worth the game, they were not asking them questions about how they were disrespecting Tuka, Miss Dominique's dead son. Nobody ever asked any of these rappers that the question they asked me. So I'm saying, nigga, if you make me mad, it's fuck your baby. It ain't just fuck your baby. It's fuck your grown son too, nigga. That's a grown son. That wasn't no kid. I'm cold in the motherfucker because there's no limits to disrespect. You can't hit me and get mad if I hit you in the head with a hammer. You shouldn't have hit me. You can't call me a bitch and I say, fuck your molested daughter. Nigga, you shouldn't have, you started this. Was there any, any, ever anything that occurred between the me, two uh, of you see, that led see, you to feel this Gilly, way aside from this? Me and Gilly been beefing for five years. See, when I first came to the internet, he threatened to slap me. He got in my DM and threatened to slap me because I said something about him speaking on Pop Hunter. See, Gilly got mad at me for speaking on a little kid Pop Hunter when Gilly shamed him for being a snitch as a 13, 14 year old kid. When this kid witnessed a murder, Pop Hunter, I'm going to show you something since y'all so believe in karma. Since y'all so believe in karma. Gilly the kid shamed Pop Hunter. Pop Hunter had one of the biggest records in rap at the time with, 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 with uh, Lil Uzi Vert. Right? Gilly shamed this kid because his kid was bigger than his son. 
right? Gilly shamed this kid who's not a street kid because his mother took him to the police station because they witnessed the murder. Because Gilly shamed this kid, this kid's career went down. This kid started having mental problems, going through it because of this. So Gilly, with his arrogance, because I spoke on it in an interview, say, I'm going to be in Dallas. When I see you, I'm going to slap you, goofy. That's what he typed to me. So I said, nigga, uh, you ain't never slapped a nigga who will kill you. You ain't never slapped no nigga who will kill you, nigga. So that's what I told him. So he didn't already threaten me once before. So when his son get killed, there's no snitches. There's no witnesses to help solve this unsolved murder since his son want to rap these gangster lyrics. Gilly's son done been murdered in the streets of Philly with an unsolved case, and they need witnesses and people to tell. Gilly is still holding up snitch codes and rules. So the guy, the author of these books, the author of these children's books, homie, he was a commissioner in Detroit, Michigan. He writes children's books. So he produced a children's book. He was a government official, a commissioner in Michigan. He reached out to Gilly because he respect Gilly and Wallow them. Nigga, the man come back with that response. Now this is a, a business associate of mine. So I'm saying, I remember when Gilly's son got killed and somebody came on my live and they tried to get me to say something bad about his son. And this was a good friend of mine. This was a good friend of mine that tried to get me to say something bad about Gilly's son. And I got mad at my friend home and kicked him offline. And I showed Gilly some compassion and mercy publicly on stage only for him to come back. So nigga, fuck his son. So now I'm being petty. Yeah, now, so now nigga, it, it, the, the gloves is off. It's disrespect. Once you disrespect me, I can disrespect your dead grandmama. She can't hear me. She ain't got no feelings. Fuck that bitch. I can disrespect your son who was killed by a drunk driver. Fuck that dead baby. I can disrespect your, your, your daughter's child who she lost in a miscarriage. Nigga, fuck the bitch because the bitch couldn't have no healthy baby. All that shit is fair game to me. Nigga, I don't give a fuck about your feelings when you step on my toe. And it's all for entertainment anyway. It's ugly entertaining, but I love it. And I'm a petty, mean motherfucker when I don't like you. When I don't like you, I don't like your kids. <laughs> yeah, I don't like your mama. You be going, you you be going in. No it ain't no different than a nigga who do a drive-by shooting and shoot up your house knowing his kids enough. It ain't no different. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you say to a lot of people who are now sitting there saying? Up. I don't give a damn who. And so, yeah, my words shooting up everybody. And I got some vicious venomous words and i pick i know how to pick words look at all these books i got nigga i got a slew of words i can use i got a slew of, i got all kind of books to read nigga i got millions of words to put on you niggas i had and i took notes with this shit i got books and books on top of books so now nigga i got a vocabulary that'll make a nigga crash out and i know these words hurt these words just don't hurt gilly they hurt his baby mama they hurt his brothers. They hurt everybody that was at that funeral. I know it. And this shit done went viral because he said something in the dark that came to the light. I showed him some compassion and mercy during his time of bereavement and grieving. He ain't grieving no more, seem like. <laughs> so fuck it. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you say to the people that are thinking, you know, like, well, your son's still out there, so what happens with... Oh, uh, my son know how to make my, my son know how to make guns. My son build build AR rifles. My son know how to break rifles down, shoot them. He's well trained. Uh, my son know how to use knives and hand to hand combat. And my son is unknown to the world. So is it like <laughs> let's say let's say that if facts though. <laughs> my son is unknown to the world, nigga, and don't nobody know. And see, my son is a mixed breed. So it's hard to see him and say, hey, that's Charleston's son. And he know how to build guns. And he know how to build guns. And but then you he got know all how these, to build guns. You know, and, and it's a conversation I was having with, with people with yesterday. Um, you know, you got the people that go crazy on the social media saying, you know, we can find him, we can touch him. Um, you know, 
Nigga, I got my address. My address been online for five years. They been saying the same shit for five years. When I said fuck Nipsey Hussle, they said, oh, he gonna be dead. Wack 100 had a whole bet that I would be dead by Christmas of two years ago. I don't now live. God is the author of life and death, so I don't fear death. See, death is the reward of breathing and living to me. That's why I, I talk the way I talk. They, they been saying you ain't died for five years, homie. And you ain't worried about people trying to silence your voice? Silence. They've been silencing my voice for however long. They've been silencing my voice for five years. Deleting the pages. They've been silencing me, but they can't silence me because my people won't let them. See, I was built by the people. Gilly was built by the industry. The people pushed me up from the bottom. I rose from the bottom to the top to stand up here with Gilly them. <laughs> so every time I, I fall, guess what the people do? Hunt, they catch me and push me back up. That's why I sell out shows. No, all black people. Gilly them, all black, I ain't got no contract. I don't get, I didn't, no, nigga, I stand with the niggas. That's why they say I'm the every neighborhood, not hood, every neighborhood. It's a book that says every neighborhood needs a Mr. Charleston. It's documented. And we finna start having book tours and book signings with this children's book. So Gilly had an opportunity to build and bridge because I offered him peace when they wanted me to bash him the day his son died. And I got mad at a friend. Publicly, I publicly chastened my friend, somebody who I got a lot of respect and admiration for out of New York City, my man Blitz. I chastened my brother in front of the world to show mercy and compassion for this brother, only for him to speak the words about a rat and there's no paperwork on me. See, now we talk, he talking street shit. He called me a snitch in a rat, which I play online. There's no paperwork on me. They got paperwork on everybody except Charleston White. They done show snitch paperwork on everybody except Charleston White. So I'm saying, Gilly, where the paperwork for you to be so adamant about me being a snitch and we promoting law-abiding citizenship to our communities? Where's the paperwork, people? No paper. No arrest. They haven't even showed an arrest record. So I'm saying, come on, Gilly. So, nigga, it's fuck your dead son because I know what kind of pain it's going to cause you, nigga. I ain't really mad. I'm just playing the game he playing. And I know it's going to go viral. So I'm taking advantage of the algorithm. Remember, I came to the internet to play the villain. I said, fuck Nipsey Hussle at first. Nipsey Hussle had just died. So why wouldn't I say fuck cheese? And cheese ain't nothing about no. I said fuck Biggie. I said fuck DMX. I said fuck Tupac. I said fuck King Von and King Von got killers. I said fuck dirt. I said fuck BG. I said fuck the Crips in the blood. I said fuck Larry. I done said fuck all of that. Raymond Washington, Tuki. You think I'm scared to say fuck G? And he wasn't nobody as big as Nipsey and Tookie and them, cuz. Who the fuck is cheese where a nigga can't say fuck him? And I said fuck Nipsey Hussle. When he died, I stood to Mob James and said fuck Buntry. Fuck Mob Paru in front of Mob James. I stood in front of... I told a Marvin and Melvin Farmer and say fuck the Crips in the blood. Who the fuck is Cheese and Gilly? Nigga, I've been bucking gang bangers. Nigga, I got hit in the head in the barbershop by a killer. Sleep in the hood. Nigga, I went to sleep in the hood. Nigga, you think I'm scared of Cheese and Gilly? A ghost right nigga for cash money? <laughs> But but cheese and, and maybe not necessarily, not necessarily cheese, right? Put on him. Cheese suffered from his father's sins. A father who still upholds street culture, and his son cannot rest. His son cannot get justice because his father, in his heart and in his mind, 
still uphold street codes. You can't serve two masters. You can't bury your son in Muslim attire and Muslim gear and still hold on to the street codes. How you gonna shame a snitch and you need a snitch to get this murder solved? How? 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 How can you that's say the, yeah. Listen, that's the part when I when I sit and I speak to you. When I sit and I speak to you, I always, I said it to you earlier. I'm like, you you have a point with what you're saying. Now, I, I'm not going to go. I just had a son, right? Listen, and I just nigga, had a daughter. If y'all so for me, it's tough to go that path. But, but I will say. When Tupac said, I fucked your wife, don't say nothing to me. If y'all didn't say nothing, when when Julio and Julio and them kids and young and age, don't say a motherfucking thing to me. And y'all watch real music develop over 10 years. Don't say a motherfucking thing to me, nigga. And y'all watch these babies. Lil Dirk, Chief Keith got a new song. Talking about smoking on Tuka. Y'all ain't never gave his mama a platform. Y'all ain't never gave Tuka mama a platform. I'll call her right now. I'll call her right now. Y'all ain't never gave Tuka mama a voice. How the fuck y'all, man? Let me call her mama. I'm finna call her mama right now. Go ahead, Y'all got, got me fucked up. Y'all can fuck cheese. Y'all ain't never apologized to Tuka. Never. Never. I the boy out here preaching to that. I came to the internet disrespecting you, nigga. Fuck I noticed. I noticed when a lot of people saying you're going too far, you say that's what you do. That's what I, I go too far. I'm known for going too far. I'm the first black man in America to come to the internet bragging about killing white men and raping white women. No other nigga been that bold. I bragged about it. I'm calling Tuco Mama right now. I'm, I'm waiting. You got the, you got, you be having the internet in a frenzy. I run the internet, nigga. This is my playground. If they ain't figured this out yet, this is my playground. What's going on, brother? Hey, how you doing, Miss Dominique? I'm doing fine. How you doing? Hey, listen, I got the internet mad at me, mama. <laughs> what you doing now, bro? Well, they mad that I'm saying fuck somebody dead. But they wasn't mad when they were saying fuck your baby. So I'm mad. I know, right? They, when they were saying all this about your baby, what was you doing? You was pleading and crying. Yeah, I'm just get them to stop. You right, brother. And to this day, ain't you nobody mean? apologized to you. At all. Gilly, Jay-Z, nobody from the industry have called and tried to make it right with you. Not at all, bro. So they better not say nothing to me till they make it right with you. Thank you, brother. I love you so much. I love, I love you, too, mama. So they better much. not say a motherfucking thing to me till they make it right with you, mama. I'm, I'm, I understand, bro. That's right. Ain't nobody apologize to me or reach out or nothing. Ain't nobody apologize to me or reach out or nothing. That's all I want, mama. I'll call you later. Okay. All right. All right. My nigga, don't y'all say nothing to me. Don't y'all say nothing to me. So, oh, so now... Call her. Go ahead. Get in touch with her and talk to her, nigga. They slaughtered her baby and wrapped about it and made millions. They got a mural of King Bum and Wally and Gillo laid next to them demons and admired them, homie. Don't say nothing to me. Do y'all make it right with that woman? Oh, shit. They made millions. Don't say nothing to me. With that fake ass shit. With that fake ass, y'all fake. And I came to show the hypocrisy. I came to show the hypocrisy of you black motherfuckers that call y'all self loving hip hop. I came to shame. And I've been shaming you niggas. I've been shaming the rap game, nigga. I exploited the weakness of this shit, nigga. I'm the new Tupac, nigga. I'm the new motherfucking Pac. 
And I own this shit. I own this motherfucking internet, nigga. I can't be counseled. I'm the people's champ. I'm the people's champ, nigga. And don't you I, I, I watch Charles in the talk. Just so y'all know, I watch Charles in the talk. That's, I that's what I. Yeah. Nigga, I got books to sell, merchandise. No, no, nigga. You see how you see how I can go into a role. You see, how I can go into a role. Uh, uh they should have been putting me in a motherfucking movie. No, nigga, I can't play like I'm about to cry and all that. It's called voice fluctuation. See, I learned how to do. This. This shit, nigga, in, in theater and arts class and public speaking. Well, what y'all mean? Y'all ain't gonna get a woman no apology. Don't. Yeah, now nah, I can play all kind of roles. <laughs> Dr. King. See, Dr. King was good at it. Oh, it's happening. Listen, listen, homie. Listen, I'm gonna show you something. Yeah. Dr. King was good at it. Malcolm was good at it. All great oratory speakers are good at it. The preacher. Well, and I say, Farrakhan. That's how you captivate the crowd to deliver the message. See, she was in a happy mood, but I didn't want to deliver a happy message. So I had to change, nigga, the tone. It's just like in the movies, nigga. That's why they play that music. Dun, 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 dun. This is the lead you up. So I had to change the tone. I got in preaching what? Didn't nobody apologize to her. Mister. So I worked my way up to it. Showing y'all something. Nigga, I wake up every day to play on the internet. This is my stage. I just use my stage for people like Miss Dominique. I use my stage. Soon as I got with Aiden Ross, I brought Aiden Ross straight to the babies. But I do know you as well, and I know that Tuka's mind definitely brings out a little bit of real emotion in you oh, too. It's not about emotion. I'm way past emotion. It's about right and wrong. A man ain't governed and ruled by emotion. He'll rule by right and wrong. That's why mama say, wait till daddy get home to whoop you. Because mama is going to whoop you with emotion. Daddy go come in and say, what did he do? Okay, what did you do? And daddy go whoop you because it's right or wrong. Not because you upset him. Daddy, how Would you feel like you failed as a father if your son was making music, if he was rapping? Yes. Yes. I would feel like a failure as a father. I told my son, nigga, you bet. I caught him trying to write rap. Nigga, you bet not grow up. You ain't gonna never grow up to be no motherfucking rapper. All them niggas dumb and stupid. All them niggas dumb and stupid. Every last one of them, nigga. And don't you put on no football helmet, neither, nigga. Don't you put on no boxing gloves. Don't you dribble no motherfucking ball. Nigga, use your mind. Use your mind, nigga. Rapping niggas don't use their mind. That's why they say stupid shit that don't mean nothing. It don't make sense sometimes. And that's why when they get in trouble, you see who really got money. They family struggle. Take them niggas out the picture. They family be struggling. So I'm saying if my son get murdered in the streets, wearing Michael Jordan tennis shoes with, a, with, with, with raps on and rap videos, and he get, I'm gonna feel like I failed as a goddamn father. I'm gonna change my life. I'm gonna turn away from the man I was before my son died, and I'm gonna resurrect a new man with a, as, a, as a pain in my heart. But I'm not gonna hold on to no snitch. I won't even give a fuck about no snitch, and I need somebody to help solve my son's murder. I wouldn't give a fuck about no snitch, and I need somebody to help me solve my baby's murder. His mama crying. His brothers and his sisters is hurt. His grandmama's name is in pain. Somebody, we just need some answers. We need what they call justice. <laughs> Hold on, this is my daughter calling. Hey, mama. Hey, dad, what you doing? Oh, nothing. On online preaching, what you doing? <laughs> oh, nothing. Um, just sitting here at school. What, do you feel to get out? Uh, no, I'm going to stay for another, like, hour, hour and a half. Okay, well, call me when you leave. Right? You go have lunch or something. Okay. Okay, Mom. Okay, bye-bye. See, that's the feeling of a father. That, that's the feeling. I'm going to feel bad if my babies want to rap, and I try to rap, and I didn't make it, and they rapping about the kind of shit that'll get you killed. 
They rapping about the kind of shit that'll get you killed. Because in the rap world, this kind of record gets you killed. Because you got to try to portray. You got to try to be something. And you were raised with a daddy who wrote for cat, and it got him killed. Hanging where you don't belong. So I tell my son, don't hang with no nigga. You get you a brawl, and you put a brawl in your car. But don't you put no niggas in the car. His son, son roll with niggas. My son don't ride with no niggas. My son don't get in the car with no bunch of dudes. He was taught that. He was raised. It's you on your bro, nigga. Because when you get in the car with a bunch of niggas, trouble. You got a fool after group. You always going to have one, one fool after group. So you ain't my son was taught that. So when I see a daddy like Gilly, nigga, I take my heart back. I gave that nigga my heart, my nigga. Go watch the video. I chastened a friend publicly. And me and my, my nigga ain't spoke since. Because I was standing on what was right at that moment. But right now, I want to be wrong, nigga. Right? Sometimes I want to be wrong. And I'm man enough to say, I want to be wrong right now. I want that nigga to feel these words. And he feel them, nigga. You know why? Because it went viral. Y'all helped me to hurt that nigga. I'm going to say it again. I want to thank y'all. Y'all helped me to hurt that nigga by coming. You put me in the algorithm to make sure he see it. Y'all gave me this power to hurt him. And I just want to thank y'all for it because I wanted to hurt that nigga with these words. I know words hurt. I know words hurt if you listen. I know if I can get your attention to make you listen, they hurt. They, they hurt. They hurt because they gonna hurt his mama. They gonna hurt his auntie. They gonna hurt. And thanks to the internet, they gave me the power to hurt that man. And I wanted to hurt that nigga with these venomous words. Job well done, internet. As much as y'all talk like y'all didn't like it, if y'all didn't come in, it wouldn't have reached the masses. It wouldn't have reached the masses. And if you don't think these words hurt, it's hurting y'all. It ain't even y'all son. It's hurting y'all. It got y'all responding. It got y'all saying this. It got y'all saying I'm on. It got y'all responding. So imagine what it's doing to him. I'm a mastermind. And they should have never gave me this power on the internet. Never. And never. And they can't take it. They can't even take it from me because they didn't give it to me. I took power. I garnished power by learning how to speak and articulate words with a delivery that captivates and mesmerize the world, nigga. And if you think I'm lying, try to stop watching me. If you think I'm lying, try to stop watching me, nigga. <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> but, I mean, it looks it, it, it seems like me. right Did now. You think I'm lying? But, but I mean, let me ask you because we talked about your relationship with the people in the industry and how it I doesn't buy no you, right? I mean, let me finish. Let me finish. Um, so like I know that you posted yesterday that you're gonna be having a conversation with Ye. Yeah, yeah, his manager reached out to me yesterday. And this is after everything. Everything occurred, so he's not afraid to have a conversation with you. Just uh, like, just like I'm not. So, so why would ye, why would Ye be afraid to have a conversation when he's Ye? Why would Ye be afraid of anything, and he's battling the Jewish entity? Why would he be afraid of such a small guy? These are small guys. Who are afraid of Wally and Gillo, my nigga? Gilly? Who are afraid of this nigga? These niggas got a, a hundred million dollar given to them. They didn't acquire a hundred million. Somebody's boys. Who's scared of these niggas? This nigga ain't who's scared of these niggas? The people who, who killed this son is still walking the earth free and alive. Who's scared of this nigga? Who? Nigga, when you built your own brand, you ain't got to be scared of nobody. When you built your own brand and you, you are a hot commodity. 
You don't have to be afraid of nobody, nigga. I made myself a necessity in people's lives. I'm needed now, nigga. The internet need me. I'm a certain part of the algorithm. Nigga, once you can build something like that, and Kanye West, a.k.a. Ye has, he made Adidas come back and buy out. Why would he be scared of some small niggas on a podcast? Half of a goof troop. Gilly Wallow, the only logic, the other nigga is a goof troop. And I don't even think much much less them right more more or less the people that are like what standing people? for oh you're talking about somebody what people suck. when they praise king mom what, what people is mad about me saying fuck keys didn't you just hear tuka's mother who man, i've been saying fuck nipsey homie how much worse can you get than that who was Keys? his son was a nobody his son was a fucking nobody a local joker. You know how many local jokers die every day in the world don't give a fuck about? Huh? huh? Nah. Oh, my nigga, there's no backlash for working with Charleston saying fuck cheese. Maybe his industry friends, but all them niggas have been turned their backs and closed the door on me. I ain't never sat on them niggas' table. And I've been eating like a... Again, I'm, I'm personally not scared to have the conversation with you. I, I feel empathy for what Gilly the King went through I, and and I and I, I, I like Gilly the King. I like Wallo. I like Million Dollar the Game. I know, I know. I'm just mother. saying me personally, I don't, it's not my deal. All these other mothers. All these other mothers. I feel you. I, but y'all ain't said nothing though. What? I had wait, a wait. whole platform. Not, not me though. Not, not, not me. You can look at... I had Mo 3 mama. Yeah. I had Mo But you can't say me because if you look at your text messages, I've been begging you to get her to come up here. I'm talking about before before I introduced y'all to her though. No, absolutely. You're I'm right. Saying you are absolutely nobody right. had any compassion for these mothers who bury black boys every day. Not one time have y'all made a post. Not once. But now that it's a celebrity, a celebrity, what about this one? Y'all just heard her, homie. Nobody had reached out to Mo. Man, y'all ain't reached out to these mothers. Don't be mother struggling, fam. Don't be mother struggling. They, I hear mothers, you. Homie, listen. It's a whole bunch of dead mothers I can go on. Right, right there in Florida, from the Jacksonville. Lil Bibby's father. Nobody have showed any. Say Cheese TV did an interview with Bibby's dad. But he's not a celebrity. And they rapped about his son right there in Florida. Nobody says nothing. They selective about what they, because they worship celebrities. I'm down here with the mothers who's not a celebrity. So it's easy to say fuck a celebrity son when he died. Easy. Easy. Because y'all don't care about these mothers down here when they bury their son. And guess what? That's every day. Every day in our hoods, in our neighborhoods. But y'all worship these niggas who rap about it, though. Y'all worship these niggas who rap about it, nigga. Nah, my nigga, I'm a different kind of nigga. That's why the people writing books about me. This is a commissioner from Detroit. This is a commissioner from Detroit. It's the author of this book. Not me. This ain't my book. He put this together. This is what the people are saying. But the celebrities hate me. You know why? Because they ain't for the people. They ain't for the people. And that's why they hate me, nigga, because I'm for the people made by the people. I sold out six shows in Detroit, Michigan, in two feet of snow with no promotion. I sold out in Oakland, Tommy T's, no promotion. Nothing. No. Because the people, when they hear I'm coming, they coming. So, nigga, I'm going to keep saying fuck these celebrity kids. I don't say fuck a bunch of these celebrities. I don't say, I could, when King Von died, I was the third nigga hollering fuck King Von. I said fuck his mama, fuck his baby. I even said fuck his baby. I even said fuck his baby. 
and they swore by God I would go die. And I went to Chicago, nigga, and sold out the promontory. And now they're saying you can't go to Philly. I ain't, I ain't, I, I ain't never been to Philly. I've been to Philly one time. I rode through Philly. Me and a producer, me and a promoter named Big Reed. I sold out a venue in Atlantic City, New Jersey, 1,100 seats. I went Check through it. Philly and said I'd never come back. The streets was dirty. They got trash everywhere. They don't have no swimming pools. They don't have no playgrounds with color. It was all concrete fences and tore down houses and trash. And it was rat infested, drug infested, and the children didn't even smile. I said, this is evil. How can Philly, when you look at the streets, they don't even have trash pickups to clean up the streets. The kids' minds is cluttered. The school districts is poor. The pregnancy rate is, is low. I, I looked at the statistics and I said, how can anybody thrive in Philadelphia? So why would a nigga want to go to Philly? Everybody dying and nobody's thriving there. Nobody, especially not the children. That's a cursed place. And I go where the grass is green. The grass ain't green now. Black people not progressing. They're not prospering. They're not elevating in Philly. It's mostly angry, violent, drug addicted, mental health people suffering from the conditions that Philadelphia breeds. So why would I want to go there? Why? They don't have nothing for somebody that got a strong mind and want to progress and they love children because when you go to Philly, you will leave their crying when you see the conditions of their kids. It should be against the law to even have to make a baby in Philadelphia if you can't afford it. I swear, all you got to do is go. I rode through there. I recorded it. You see, I can change my voice up on these niggas like the preacher. <laughs> That's why I'm sitting here. Do you see how I can sit here and change my voice like the preacher? <laughs> Oh, man. I can go in and out the road to deliver the message. But do you see how tuned in you with the with the delivery? Boy, that voice tone on a motherfucker. Uh, I mean shit. I mean look, look, uh, you know, off of that, <laughs> off of that, you see like people raise their kids all sorts of different ways, and now you got this dude who who seems to have raised his kids pretty well for the most part. Well, according to who, though? It has them in hand. Well, we, 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 can't, we can't say seem to raise them pretty real because he was traveling with cash money and he's not in the household with his kids. He's on tour. He So many dudes that's in the industry in their young age is not raising their kids right. Okay, yeah. Most of us yeah, don't I raise our kids right in our 20s. I, I why, hear you on that. That's why they grow up and try to mimic us. That's why they grow up and try to mimic us. But what does that make? you feel like what i said with seeing diddy's kids in handcuffs yesterday Nothing. with all the shit you know what i mean uh, like I, I i don't have any empathy and sympathy for rich celebrities even when they die and their kids die i didn't feel nothing when bobby christina died i didn't feel nothing with whitney houston died i didn't feel nothing when prince died i didn't feel nothing with dmx died i'm not attached to those people i cry with what i read in the back of the obituary I'm connected to these people. So it don't allow me to cry, have any emotion when I see Diddy kids in handcuffs. I've seen five-year-olds in handcuffs, nigga getting pulled out of school just because he won't leave class. That's what affect me. A kid at school getting handcuffs put on him. A 17-year-old girl getting arrested for, 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 for trespassing because she a runaway and the projects don't want in the projects no more. So Officer Darty and them arrested her. Me and Officer Darty became friends because he arrested a 17-year-old prostitute for trespassing and she was homeless. I said, God damn, daughter, nigga, you know that she, come on, my nigga, she homeless. That's what affect me. Not no motherfucking billionaire, millionaire, celebrity motherfucking kid. I got to go through anything. It don't move me. It don't move me. Sometimes I say that's what they get. They should have stayed down here with us. What if you popped sooner though? Cause now you can't, like now you're somebody that you can't stay still. Everybody's hiring you here, 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 there. You're everywhere, right? Yeah. You know, what if you weren't able to, with your profession, be around your son every single day? Uh, mama, How do mama, you have the mama, father mama, mama, at mama, that point? My, my mother took an early retirement from General Motors so she can raise my sister and became an entrepreneur. My mother saw 
working those shifts at General Motors, how the lack of parental supervision played a part in me and my brother making delinquent decisions. So when my sister was born, she took an early retirement from General Motors so she can raise that baby. Nigga, my kid's grown. I made the sacrifice, nigga, to be that daddy taking them to school. I did that so I can do this. That's why I can tell Gilly what I'm telling him, nigga. I made the sacrifices. Nigga, I went and left home and landed a dream job. Diamond Dale Adolescent Group Home in, in Los Angeles, California. A dream job. Working with youth, getting out to California Youth Authority. But nigga, my son. I saw I couldn't bring my son to L.A., but I ain't going to leave him. I quit that job to go back to be with my son. I know how my presence is way more important, nigga. So the rewards that I'm getting now, I made the sacrifice for years ago. So I don't sacrifice my son like many parents sacrifice their children just to pay the bills. They end up losing their children just to pay bills. They end up losing their children just to pay bills. And the conditions don't be no better. So no, I watch mama do it. I watch my mama lose her two boys trying to give us the best life. Where if you just give them what they need, give them what they need. No, so I understand. But nigga, in my 20s, I did some things and exposed my son to some things. But by the time I was 30, I realized I have to go undo what I exposed him to. When I had his sister, his sister gave me the ability. His sister gave me the ability to go back and undo the things that I exposed him to by the way I raised and nurtured his sister. So, nigga can't, nigga, I'm a day one daddy. I got, I got pictures from when they was, from the sonogram to now. I've never been absent. Well, nigga, a daddy nigga can't tell me nothing. I done stood with many fathers as they buried their sons. I done stood with many mothers as they buried their sons. And I'm telling you, my son don't display those traits. And I'm confident. I'm confident in my son's decision making. I'm confident in his choice of friends because he's been taught, nigga, not to get a bunch of friends. See, his son was killed with two other people in a group in a group and so what does rapping do rapping puts you in a group puts you in a group and out that group guess what it's some beasts in that group that attach you to those beasts because you want to rap and guess what rapping is about now beasts beasts so get what i'm gonna tell my son let's do something else my nigga you my son and everybody know you, my son. Let's do something else, my nigga. A far, uh, 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 there's a scripture that my mother used to always say. She says, son, the Bible says that a son can do nothing without the father, that he can only do what he see his father does. A son can do nothing Without the father, he can only do what he sees his father does. Children mimic what they see and repeat what they hear. I'm going to say it again. Children mimic what they see and repeat what they hear. If my, my son was murdered in the streets, there's no way that I would respond the way that man responded. My heart would change, my mind would change, my spirit would change, my soul would change, which is my mind, my will, and my emotions. I would change my mind, my will, and my emotions would change if I lost my boy. I wouldn't give a fuck about a snitch. I wouldn't give a fuck about a rat. Because I know those are the elements and the components that I need for my baby to lay in rest. Those are the things that I need to lay my baby to rest. So why would I try to shame those elements 
Because those are the very things that I need to get peace. To have some kind of healing. So nigga, I'm telling y'all, get out the way and let Gilly get what he deserves. This is God's doing. <laughs> hey. Listen, there man, I got it. A, 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 a lot, a lot of, look, a lot of people thought that uh, you you sidestepped. Let me and let me I, answer it. That you sidestepped the conversation. I think he really, I think he really stepped into that. He's, he's talking about. See, I, I think that people really forget. My bad, it cut out for a second. I think people really forget that ever since we had Charleston White on the episode first, it wasn't for us to say here we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about this and drag them into it the same thing with everybody else we have i'm letting people speak and and them talk and them tell their story it's what he wants to talk about we did the same shit with kelsey roger bonds all the people that we had these conversations with again it's not it's not my personal opinion this is his opinions and i i always sat there and uh chris same shit um, we always sat there and we're like, damn, no matter what we thought about a certain situation or what side we were on, when he speaks, he makes sense and, and you got to respect it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it just is what it is. Um, I know it's an unorthodox way to, it's no different than a rapper selling albums, right? When they get ready to have an album come out, they cause an incident to do something to push the album sales. You don't think this ain't going to push the book sales? I think it is. I know it is. So, nigga, I know what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. Because I conquered the algorithm yesterday. I probably surpassed over 3 million views. That video went viral on all social media platforms. So, it's all about selling. See, the old niggas say you got to wake up and have something to sell to your people. I got something to sell to my people. And I got an audience and a fan base that's cheering for me. So, if you want to purchase this book, you can purchase this book at www. Uh, MrCharlestonBook.com www.MrCharlestonBook.com Yes, indeed. Dot com. Man, so, so, you know, I ain't just selling books. I'm selling game, too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm teaching lessons. But the author of the book, homie, was just trying to... Because he got a lot of respect for them guys. So I got a lot of people around me like Wallow and Gilly. They got a lot of respect for those guys. So out of respect, he was just pushing the book to somebody he respected because he's the author. And by the way, he wrote plenty of children's books. So I think this is like his 11th or 10th, 10th or 11th book. So I, all I'm saying is, and this nigga, is if what, my son what, was what, murdered, what, what, what is it? The every IG is neighborhood I needs a Mr. Charleston. Every, every neighborhood needs a Mr. Charleston. So I'm saying, and, and in his book, homie, it's a section in there. It said, it, it even, look what it said right here in this book. It says he even said he would cooperate with the police to protect our neighborhood. This is what it said right there. This is in the book. So that's why I'm telling Gilly, since he tried to shame me as a snitch, I'm telling Gilly, hey, Gilly, I would have snitched on the people who killed your son. You know, I've been hashtagging that I, after yeah. every post. I've been saying I would have snitched on the people who killed your son. Because in this book, I'm letting the children know Mr. Charleston will cooperate with the police to keep y'all safe. Mm. Well, there you go. That's where you get the book right there, my boy. I'm the kind of snitch you want. The one that's not breaking laws. The one that's not committing crimes. I'm the kind of snitch you want in your neighborhood. Hey, it's like neighborhood watch. Like George Zimmerman. I'm, I'm the new yeah. George Zimmerman. I'm the new mother, and I and I Trayvon Martin. Yo, he can't, you can't Man, leave you can't tell nothing. Me what I ain't. In my you mind, can't I'm leave the new George nothing Zimmerman. Non -confrontation. I'm gonna follow you. I'm the new George Zimmerman, nigga. You do something wrong in my neighborhood. I'm the new George. Yo, why can't you leave nothing non-confrontational? Well, because every, this was every, in my mind. every statement, every statement. Every, you be I'm a controversial shit. nigga. Yeah. I come to be Man, controversial. As soon, I'm the new George this episode's Zimmerman. Episode's over. People are coming at me thinking I'm Illuminati or some shit. Oh, uh, we is. They're gonna be attacking me now. We is Illuminati. Nah, I don't. And I, and I got, and I, I got an auntie and a cousin. I got an auntie and a cousin that I sacrifice. I'm into it with my auntie and my cousin, and I sacrifice <laughs> a few of them for the Illuminati. I am an Illuminati. <laughs> I, I might sacrifice a few. 
That's what I'm talking about. So I want in. Fuck is you talking about? I yeah, yeah, I just don't, yeah. I'm gonna do everything except get fucked in the ass and fuck. But all that all you. that sacrifice and relatives, I'm with all that shit. Well, Unc, again, I hey, long live cheese, okay? I'm not against him, though. Don't make me against him. Long live him. Tuka. Long I, I, live Tuka. I agree, and, and, long and live not, Tuka. And, and, and I'm and I'm asking y'all, if y'all really feeling this for Gilly, why y'all never felt this for Mr. For Tuka's mama? You're they had right. Well, I, I just want to You're say absolutely this. right. It black, is, it's it's about people, how, how if black it gets people, you, you black people was dissing Tuka so much. White people start dissing Tuka, and they didn't even know he was a kid. That's yeah, how was, that's how big that shit had got. People in other countries were smoking on Tuka, and they were hurting that woman. So, nigga, if y'all fucked up about this, go back and be fucked. Go take King Von down then. If y'all really mad, be mad at Dirk. Call Dirk back on his platform and make him apologize to that woman. By the fact, Chief Keith got a new song smoking on Tuka. Y'all ain't mad. Chief Keith got a new song talking about smoking on Tuka. Y'all ain't mad? Don't play like y'all mad with me. Is it because I'm small with one eye and disabled and y'all think y'all can beat me up? Why aren't y'all mad at Chief Keith? New song. Come on, y'all. listen to Chief. So I hear what you're saying, though. You can't. You know what I mean? Say long live Tuka, then. You said long live cheese to a Well, no, I said, I said long live oh, Tuka immediately up. I'm about to say, but watch. Nah, you, you can't. Listen, you, 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 know, you, you know where my stance is. You know, like, I, I, I definitely didn't even know the Tuka story until. You're right. The celebrity thing is real, right? Like. I, I don't I didn't I didn't know who the fuck Tuka was or what went on until you sat there and you explained it to me. I heard his smoking mama, on Tuka. I never even mama, knew it was a real person. That's how bad think. they done that woman. That's how bad, bad they done that woman. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, my nigga. So it's easy for me to come do the celebrity people like this. I didn't start at the top with these guys. So we're not friends. They didn't lift me up open the doors and invite me in. I came from the bottom, I climbed up to the top and I kicked doors down. And I kicked doors down. So why wouldn't I do to them the same way that they celebrate the guys that have done this to Miss Dominique? Remember, I came in on her back. Remember, I came to this industry on her back Tuka. I started out saying fuck the dead. Y'all thought I stopped? You can go down the list. Drakeo, go down the list. I started out saying fuck the dead. DMX, Biggie, it don't matter because guess what? I don't give a fuck about the dead. My mama said that the Bible said let the dead bury the dead that's why y'all cherish the dead because y'all dead y'all disrespect the living every day you disrespect your baby mothers you disrespect your girlfriends you disrespect your mothers you disrespect your neighbors you disrespect strangers at the store you disrespect people in traffic when you're having road rage but all of a sudden you got so much love and respect for the dead but you don't even honor and respect the living How's that so? When the instructions are, love thy neighbor. Pray for those that persecute you. How can you love the dead and you don't even know this dead, but you are disrespect, you ain't speak to your neighbor. You go pick up your children for school and walk by kids and don't speak. Walk by teachers and how can you love the dead so? This is a bunch of hypocrites. And I came to the internet. And I have been the most effective in showing the hypocrisy of you people playing a hypocrite. And I want to be a hypocrite. I want to be. I just don't lie, steal, or cheat. But I do all that other shit. I don't fuck a punk. I don't molest a child. But I do all that other shit like you. I do all, all that other because we are all humans. But the difference between me and you, you can always tell a tree by the fruit in which it bears and just for the record I don't even know this man that wrote this book about me he done research on me I've never met him and I was that's crazy I thought he, 
he knew he, he knew. Even, yeah, I, you know, I, he did research. This is all documented research because he's an author and he has to go to a publishing company. So he had to do now. No, 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 no. I don't even know this brother. This is not my work. But he wrote it for children because he studied Mr. Charleston. And he understand and realized that every neighborhood need a Mr. Charleston, not a Gilly the King. See, I come on the road, I come on this motherfucker to really play a villain. I wanted to be one in life as a kid, trying to play gangster. I should have been a lawyer, but I tried to play gangster and forfeited my calling. But boy, I found a gift and a talent, how to talk. And I'm getting rich from it. And if you think your dead baby, your dead son or whoever ain't off limits, you got me fucked up. And if you're willing to crash out and throw your life away for something I'm said, I'm willing to kill you for it. And I'm willing to die behind it. Because if you don't think after five years of talking like this online, you don't think I don't know the consequences that what can come to me from saying this? Y'all don't think I, I really be saying, man, these niggas really can get me. I know, but I don't care. Because when I lay down at night, I think about guys like Gilly who uphold street codes and street ethics and principles and try to shame. Yo, people. yo, this shit's cutting off in 20 seconds, just so you know. It's right, let me just say this. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Hey. Uh, you're out here preaching, my boy. I'm going to holler at you soon. I'm going to call you up. Yeah.